Hi, my name is Albert Dunford, and in this tutorial video, we are going to cover the link between PSIM and Simulink uh, using the PSIM module SIM coupler. So I've got MATLAB open now, and I'll open up uh, Simulink here, and I'm going to launch this example circuit. This is one of the examples that comes with PSIM. Uh, and let's just resize the window here. So this example is a motor drive. The control uh, loop is defined with Simulink, and the inverter, DC bus, and motor, and the uh, gating signal generation is handled by PSIM. And we could just run the simulation right away, and there will be some circuits that we can look at or waveforms that we can watch while this is simulating. Bring this over from my other monitor. We've got these pop-ups here from PSIM. So we're able to monitor things with, with uh, the Simulink scope. And we can also look at the waveforms uh, refresh with the PSIM runtime variables that are predefined in the schematic. So we've got currents and then the torque generated by the machine here. Uh, and uh, once the simulation is finished, uh, the current and voltage probes that were defined in PSIM um, are available to view in as well in PSIM SimView program, or you can go and uh, analyze things with uh, MATLAB. So here we've got the currents, the shaft speed, we've got the uh, modulation waveform there, and we've also got the uh, motor torque uh, generation. So these are all available for us to, to look at, as I said, with PSIM SimView. And uh, let's go back and uh, look at the schematic that's being uh, simulated by PSIM. So if we double, so this is the block here that provides the link or the interface between the two uh, elements or the two uh, programs. So this is the S function block. If we double click on this, it opens up the uh, browser here, open up uh, the schematic. And so this is the schematic that's running. So we're passing to Simulink, we're passing the uh, currents for, from the phases here. And we're also bringing in the modulation waveforms and we're also passing out the uh, shaft speed. So these are uh, called uh, in and out link nodes, and they are found in elements, uh, control, sim coupler, and there they are, in and out link node. And then once you define these and you save the schematic, these are going to be automatically loaded in uh, when you link to that schematic here, so when you browse and open that schematic. One thing we can also do is we can add a variable. So we can go and say, this is going to be the DC bus voltage, and change that to uh, 650 volts, apply OK, and then come back into uh, PSIM here, and then we can change the DC bus voltage here to a variable that we're going to use, VDC, hit Save, and then uh, we can rerun that simulation. And we should be able to, uh, there, there things are going again. And again, we see the current and the uh, motor torque again. Uh, we'll let that run along there. So again, this is the S function block. So if we open up the library browser in Simulink, we'll see that's the S function sim coupler block here. So this is the element you want to place into your schematic. And once you place that into the schematic, uh, you will then browse to this PSIM simulation that you want to uh, run. So again, that simulation just finished. There's those waveforms again. Um, yeah, so this is going to be, you open that up and browse the, to the schematic you want. The other option that you have in the PSIM schematic itself is, is where these get organized here. So if you go to simulate um, arrange S-link nodes, uh, you can change the relative position that when you load this into Simulink, um, how this is going to get defined over here. Okay. Another thing to comment on is the time step in Simulink does not need to be the same as the time step in PSIM. As long as the PSIM time step is smaller, or the same or smaller, you'll be good to go. And uh, basically, piece, uh, Simulink will just wait for PSIM to finish its job if it's uh, got a smaller time step to deal with. So you can maybe have a, a have optimized time steps for that reason. And then the other thing to comment on is if you go into help, uh, there is a tutorial document here, the, this, the sim coupler module PDF, and this kind of goes into the link in a little bit more detail um, as well. Okay, so that's uh, it for this tutorial video. One other thing to comment on uh, before I forget is these are control signals here, so you can only have uh, an input or an output from PSIM to Simulink or Simulink to PSIM. 
We don't handle bidirectional signals. So if you want to pass a power signal, you need to set that up with uh, controlled sources. Okay, so that's it for this tutorial video. Uh, check back again for more tutorial videos. Uh, just a quick one on this uh, sim coupler function. And uh, thank, you much, thank you so much for watching. Bye now.